the abruptness of the past few weeks has been jarring to say the least. Cancellations and changes in plans came without warning. My daughter, she was scheduled to attend a friend's birthday party last weekend. Her first birthday party as an invited guest, but the party was canceled. Baseball seasons have been postponed. Here at church, we've been forced to reschedule weddings, funerals, to move worship services online, all in an effort to protect everyone who would be gathered in this room. Flight cancellations have led to business trips and vacations being put on hold. As much as I would love to go to the dentist next week, that appointment has been rescheduled for some time this coming summer. As the world takes a preventative pause in platforms like Zoom and FaceTime and Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus are stretched beyond their server's capability, it can seem as though every aspect of our lives has been put on pause. During an international pandemic, now more than ever, we are reminded that while we can cancel events and change our routine, hitting the pause button on almost every aspect of our lives, death is still present. Now more than ever, the fragileness of our lives has been presented to us front and center, and there's little that we can do about it. After he was accused of blasphemy in Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples retreated across the Jordan River to avoid stoning and an arrest that many religious leaders in the city were beginning to insist was necessary. Jesus then received word that his dear friend Lazarus had been sick. Jesus waited two days before he departed for Bethany, back into the hostile land he and his disciples had just fled. Before arriving in Bethany, before he was greeted by Martha and Mary, Jesus told his disciples, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples didn't read between the lines, and Jesus had to tell them a bit more plainly, Lazarus is dead. Now, I know many of you know the rest of this story. Jesus was greeted separately by Mary and Martha. Lazarus, he had been dead for four days. And Jesus, well, he became greatly disturbed in spirit, and he was deeply moved. Jesus then went to the tomb of his dear friend, and he wept. Standing. At the tomb of his friend, a person Jesus cared deeply for and loved. Jesus had a physical reaction. Weeping is more than a teardrop coming down someone's face that can be cleaned with a tissue. Weeping is an emotional, bodily response when our spirit is wounded. The Son of Man was deeply moved when he was confronted face-to-face with death. Sin has held power over all of humanity ever since the garden, ever since Adam and Eve failed to follow God's commands. Sin has led to death. And even death doesn't take a day off. Now, here comes my favorite part. Jesus called Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, called by name, come out. This is an important detail that we often overlook. Had Jesus not called Lazarus by name, perhaps the entire tomb, all of Lazarus' family would have come out, having been buried together in the family tomb. Lazarus exited the tomb, and those gathered, and those who 
witnessed life returning to this man that they knew to be dead for four days. The man whose soul they knew had left his body. Those people took the burial clothes off the dead man who was now walking before them. Normally on any given Sunday, there would be an illustration woven throughout the sermon. This illustration would draw you in and hold your attention while you sat on these hard wooden pews. From a preacher's perspective, it's a distraction from the daydreams that you have about your plans after church. The downside to these illustrations is that we often remember the illustration and we forget the truth spoken to us by God's word. But friends, this is no ordinary Sunday. Today we find ourselves in a world on pause. With much of our lives canceled or rescheduled. And we are living this illustration. There's no anecdote that I can share to make what's happening at the tomb of Lazarus more clear than this past week and weeks have made it. Standing at the tomb, Jesus, God incarnate, was deeply troubled. There's no easier way to say this than to say that Jesus was angry. God doesn't delight in suffering and in death. When face to face with the condition that we all carry, God became angry. God wept. Disease and affliction are not God's punishment doled out to humanity for fill-in-the-blank reason. Disease and affliction are signs of an enemy named death. And standing at his friend's tomb, face to face with this enemy, God is angry. So angry that God has a bodily response. Lazarus carried a disease more widespread than any pandemic the world has ever faced. Death. We're all afflicted by death. As much as we try, none of us can escape it. No amount of cancellations or changes in plans can cancel or change this condition that each of us faces. But in Jesus Christ, God incarnate, the one who came down from on high and took up an earthly existence, we are recipients of the promise. The promise that death doesn't get the last word. The day is coming when God is going to shout to all of us, every single one of us, to come out. And all of death will be unbound. All of the grave clothes will be set aside, no longer necessary. The words of resurrection spoken to Lazarus are the words of resurrection spoken to each of us. God spoke to the prophet Ezekiel and said that the dry bones, the dry bones shall live again. Where life and death seem gone in dust and ash, and in the grave, God is going to shout, come out. Over the past few weeks, we have been reflecting on who we are, asking the question, who am I as a follower of Christ, using St. Paul's words that we are to adopt the same mind that was in Christ. So who are we? We are resurrection people. We are people who do not believe that death holds the final word. We are people who week after week proclaim boldly Christ resurrected. We are in Lent, but Lent is beginning to draw to a close. And we are approaching Holy Week, approaching the grand celebration of Easter, holding on to the resurrection promise. The promise that the shadow of the cross, the shadow of death, they don't get the last word. And we can hold on to this promise, not just because of Christ's triumph over death on Easter, but also because resurrection, new life, eternal life, where death was thought to have victory, is who Christ Jesus is. 
I offer it to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.